Welcome to our second lesson on cell transport. In our first lesson, I defined cell transport and I talked about the two main divisions of cell transport as passive transport and then active transport. And one of the examples of passive transport that we saw in that lesson is diffusion. So this lesson is going to focus on diffusion. For the objectives, at the end of this lesson, the student would be able to define diffusion and would also be able to list factors that affect the rate of diffusion and would as well be able to state common examples of diffusion. And it's very important for you to have knowledge about passive transport. I talked about that briefly in our previous lesson. So please, if you haven't watched that lesson, do so before you proceed with us in this lesson. So let's start by taking the definition of diffusion. Well, I would define diffusion as the movement of substances from a region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration until they are evenly distributed. And there are some important components of this definition that I would like to stress on. Um, the first of them is substances. It's talking about movement of substances. So talking about the substances, we mean whether they are in the form of molecules or they are in the form of ions, etc. And we have also talked about from a region of they are. So they are being used here. He's talking about the substance in question. Whether the molecule in question or the ion in question. So from they are. So if it's molecule, from the molecule's higher concentration. Or that region where the molecule is having a higher concentration there. To a region of the lower concentration. So to a region where the molecule concentration is lower. And finally, it talks about until they are evenly distributed. So until there is um, approximately a balance between the number or the amount of molecules in these two regions that we are talking about. Okay. So for diffusion, we can talk about them in two main um, forms. We can talk about simple diffusion and we can talk about facilitated diffusion. So next, I'm going to talk about these briefly. What is simple diffusion and what is facilitated diffusion? Well, in simple diffusion, the substances or molecules move down the concentration gradient, but without assistance of membrane proteins. So normally the substances that are so small in size, and so they wouldn't require any assistance to move um, across the cell membrane. That is what we refer to as simple diffusion. I have this image here that I would like to use to illustrate what simple diffusion is. Well, since it is diffusion, the movement is from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. In this image, this is a cell, and the cell has these molecules. And outside the cell is another region, so the cell is one region, outside the cell is another region. And the outside of the cell also has these molecules, right? So assuming we are talking about um, oxygen, for example. So the molecules outside the cell, let's count how many of them there are. And let's bear in mind that we are just assuming the volumes that we are considering here are similar. In that case, outside the cell would have a higher concentration than inside the cell. Because outside the cell we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Outside the cell, we have 12 of the molecules. But inside the cell, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So the molecules outside the cell are more than those inside the cell. So it means outside the cell, the concentration is higher. So for simple diffusion, they will just move straight from where they are more to where they are less. So like this. Or to say, from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. Yes, and this is going to result in what we defined in diffusion as evenly distributed. So now you realize that they will be evenly distributed. Because you are going to have how many of them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Outside the cell, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Inside the cell. So that makes them now evenly distributed. Although it is not as perfect as I have presented it here. But approximately, that is what it means, right? So simple diffusion includes diffusion of oxygen, like I said, and diffusion of carbon dioxide across the cell membrane. It is a very simple process, actually. After simple diffusion, let's now move on to facilitated diffusion. 
Now, one thing is that though in both cases for simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion, the substances or molecules would move down the concentration gradient. So it means they would move from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. But in facilitated diffusion, these substances or molecules are aided by membrane proteins. So as you see in here, substances or molecules move down the concentration gradient being assisted by membrane proteins. And I have an image here to help us understand it. This is similar to the image we saw in our previous um, slide. But we are talking about a situation where the whole diffusion process would be facilitated. So it means there are membrane proteins as I've indicated them here. So here, the molecules that are going to move from outside the cell to inside the cell would have to be transported through the membrane proteins or via the membrane proteins. So like this. Such molecules cannot be transported except they are passed through the membrane proteins. And note that the membrane proteins too, um, they are shown in different forms, but that is not the focus of this lesson. So just bear in mind that in facilitated diffusion, the whole process is aided by membrane proteins. So like this. And facilitated diffusion includes diffusion of larger molecules like glucose and amino acids across the cell membrane. Right. So that's the main difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Simple diffusion, the molecules normally are just so small, so they freely pass from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. But for facilitated diffusion, although they also move from higher concentration to lower concentration because it's diffusion, but the difference is that they would have to be assisted by membrane proteins. Good. Now let's move on to the next point or the next thing that I need us to know, factors that affect the rate of diffusion. So whether diffusion will be going high or be going low, um, what factors affect it? The first one is concentration gradient. Already I've talked about that. When concentration gradient exists, diffusion freely occurs. When the molecules per the concentrations are somehow balanced, it means um, diffusion wouldn't occur. Diffusion is also increased by increase in temperature. Normally when temperature increases, you would expect that the molecules or the substances involved will gain more energy. And as they gain energy, they move faster. So that makes the rate of diffusion also increase. And as well, pressure. But in this case, uh, we are talking about what we refer to as a mean free path. When pressure increases, the molecules tend to be closer to each other because pressure pushes a lot of the molecules um, to cause them to be clamped at one side. And so when pressure increases, it reduces the rate of diffusion. Yes, except on the normal favorable pressure. And a wider surface area of the cell membrane also increases the rate of diffusion. Yeah, because when surface area increases, it provides more space so that diffusion can occur from so many sides of it. Then we talk about membrane permeability. Cell membranes are semi-permeable. It means they don't allow every substance to enter. They select which substances should enter and which ones shouldn't and that permeability affects the rate of diffusion. And finally, we talk about size of the molecules. Naturally, smaller molecules tend to move freely and faster than the larger molecules. Okay, so these are some factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Now, we are going to end by talking about common examples of diffusion. But because diffusion occurs in so many um, organisms and so many parts of the organisms, I have grouped them. So we'll be looking at examples in animals, then from that we'll go and look at examples of plants and examples of other organisms. Okay, so example one in animals, diffusion of oxygen into the blood and carbon dioxide out of blood in the lungs of mammals. So when you breathe in air, the oxygen content will diffuse across the alveoli of the lungs and enter the blood so that it will be sent to all parts of the body. That is by diffusion. Similarly, diffusion of oxygen from blood to body cells 
after the blood has received oxygen from um, the lungs they would have to send them to the body cells and movement of oxygen from the blood to the body cells would also occur by diffusion and as they do carbon dioxide is also diffused out of the body cells or the tissues back into the blood third point diffusion of nutrients that is end products of digestion from small intestines into blood so after digestion when the food substances have been broken down and the end products of digestion are available so amino acids are available glucose are available um, fatty acids and glycerol are available they would have to be moved from the small intestines into the blood so that it can be sent to the body and that occurs by diffusion first by diffusion good and then we can talk about diffusion of nutrients from blood into body cells yes diffusion of waste from body cells into the blood as well and the sixth point here we can talk about diffusion of waste in kidney during excretion then talk about diffusion of hormones out of endocrine glands then exchange of materials between fetus and mother through the placenta the fetus or developing baby if we should say needs a lot of nutrients and those nutrients move from the mother to the fetus by diffusion and as well the waste substances from the fetus would also move from its body into the mother's blood so that it can be excreted and that also occurs by diffusion now let's move on to examples in plants so for plants we can talk about exchange of gases between leaves and the atmosphere carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaves for photosynthesis and that occurs by diffusion oxygen also diffuses out of the leaves into the atmosphere then we can talk about diffusion of food or nutrients from the leaves to other parts of the plants then gases as have been received by the plant so whether oxygen yes or carbon dioxide for whichever purpose that is going to be used for in the plant they would have to be moved from tissue to tissue and that occurs by diffusion and absorption of mineral salts from the soil into the plant through the roots and up the plant is done firstly by diffusion Then you can talk about diffusion of hormones between cells of plants. Now let's look at some other examples that are found in other organisms as well. The first example is about saprotrophs. And um, saprotrophs will do extracellular digestion, break the food down on the outside. So when the nutrients are now available, they would have to absorb the nutrients and they do that by diffusion. Then we can talk about diffusion of oxygen from the surrounding water into unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecium. Then also diffusion of excretory products out of such unicellular organisms. Good. I mean, if you want to mention the examples, we can go on and on and on. And I think you can give yourself that assignment by looking for some other examples of diffusion. In whichever organism at all yeah okay so this is what i have for you for diffusion and it has been a very interesting lesson i know yes in today's lesson we have looked at diffusion both simple and facilitated and we have looked at the factors that affect the rate of diffusion then we came to talk about examples of diffusion in organisms all right so let's take these few questions and you can send your answers to me in the contact that I will provide or in the comment section. So the first is what is diffusion? Then you state three factors that affect the rate of diffusion. And finally, you give three examples of diffusion in each of the following organisms. So first about animals, you give three examples of diffusion in animals and you give three examples of diffusion in plants good so this is the first part of our lessons on passive transport so we have looked at diffusion next we are going to talk about the other passive transport which is osmosis right so see you in our next lesson